inventions in power electronics, how to do it and how not to do it. Okay, so yeah, I could have uh, reversed the order and do how not to do it first, but I don't want to bore you with that because you, you want to forget about it. <laughs> so so I, I want to first, first show you the right way of doing, and then hopefully when I learn from me a right way of doing it, then uh, it will be obvious when I described the past efforts in the field, why that was a bad way to do it, okay? And uh, so let's, uh, let's go and uh, make a first slide. And you see, I have a now nice grid. I have uh, my magic pen, right? And I have uh, here draw. And I'll introduce you to something that you haven't seen so far. This is my ruler. Cool. You like that? Okay. And when I have a ruler, I can draw much nicer. Now that I nicely drawn this, what can I do with this easily? Say, duplicate this slide. So it is here, right? So now I can show you step by step of thinking. And uh, one thing that uh, uh, when I invented the chill converter, which is this, and I showed you the process how I went through it to uh, do the, to invent it from cascade of the boost and the back converter in series, and then deciding I don't need the four switches. I can make it uh, uh, the two switches as long as I give up on the polarity non-inverting features and make it polarity inverting flyback. In fact, my motivation was a flyback converter because I tried to figure out why flyback has a better gain function up and down when the boost has only step up and back has only step down. And then I proved myself how I would derive flyback converter for cascade over the back and a boost. Now this was uh, how I drive this converter. And now at that time, the people said, oh, you have a new converter and so on. It's uh, patented and it took a while until I have an isolated version that, that Caltech decided to uh, apply for a patent and it was issued, but that was no point. Point for me was the invention of the true converter was 10% importance, 90% was a way of thinking, which led to it. Because I explained to everybody, once I have that way of thinking, that is going to be the one that I can use in the future. Chuk and has got just one. Now I have Chuk back two and I have a number of others. What is important is a logical way of thinking step by step, which of course, as I explained to you, Patent office doesn't recognize it. If you have a, a real clear explanation, then it's not a patent. It's like uh, obvious, or it is uh, what I consider um, physics law, right? I mean, Faraday's law. He couldn't have patented Faraday's law, I guess, but, but in my mind, he should have, you know, but anyway. So now let's see the process. So process of invention in power electronics is opposite of designing integrated circuits. It's not uh, more components you have and more different components and you throw everything on it and you say, hey, let's look at it. In a, I say a silicon in a integrated circuits, you have different technology and one technology is such that you may use a three times more devices. It's better than one with a three times less devices, but that's not the case in power electronics. And what I'm going to show you today, very simple step and actually on a, fellow from India who said it was bad where, where, where I had two inductances there, so his uh, boss wouldn't even consider it, and the Indian uh, National Science uh, Foundation, whatever, wouldn't give any money for it. Well, I want to satisfy his, uh, 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 to tell him that I'll show him now one converter, which has one inductor, but it's much better than this converter, okay? And it does a lot more. And what I'm going to do, first step is, uh, I'm going to, uh, well, as a first step, as a first step, I'm going to eliminate this inductor. So this fellow from India, are you happy now I have one inductor 
and not too inductances, right? Very much happy, sir. So now we have uh, replaced that inductor with a single diode. So why this is this is really not good? Because if you look at this charging current during on t during this uh, switch, this this is a discharging current. That's exactly what I told you. Do you see here? This is what happens in a switch capacitor. With, when this switch is turned on uh, in this loop, it forces the diode to turn on. So this capacitor and this capacitors are now in parallel. You have two ch capacitors connected in parallel, right? But what is the problem? These two capacitors have different ripple because of different charging and discharging. So therefore, uh, during this period, you have you're basically uh, uh, transferring charge from one capacitor to the other, but not in a, in a how to say in a very um, uh, efficient way. But I'll show you one more. Actually, this is not as bad. Just to tell you the the uh, re reasoning. Let's go here and uh, use this one, and I'll say duplicate slide. 